Well, street racing and stunt driving in Ontario have exploded during the pandemic because of reduced traffic. To highlight some of the more serious dangers, we're joined this morning by professional performance driver and race car driver Demi Chalkis. So thanks very much for joining us. You do what you do safely because you do it on a closed track. Absolutely. Hi, Annette. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, thank you for giving me this platform to share such a crucial and serious matter such as stunt driving. I'm uh, with Teens Learn to Drive, and we are a Mississauga-based nonprofit campaign. And our main focus is saving lives and just really trying to prevent any car crashes through education. When we are on a racetrack, we have our roll cages, our safety equipment, we have a closed circus, and we are trained professionals. Out on the road, there are so many external factors that you just cannot avoid that can really um, cause serious accidents. And people who are out there stunt driving are risking not only their own lives, but everybody else that they share the road with. And it's a matter that has affected me personally. So thank you for this opportunity to be sharing this message with you. Mm -hmm. Because you never know when something could pop out, uh, a child, an, a, what another driver is going to do, what the road conditions are. And then let's not forget about speed limits. You don't drive with the speed limit. Absolutely. There are so many factors that some people are not taking into uh, to account there. Uh, debris on the road even, for example, there can be gravel. Uh, there can be an accident that happened prior and there's still debris on the road. Even weather conditions, rain, mm -hmm. anim animals can pop out, children, people, other cars that don't know how to react to you coming at them at those speed and they kind of start to swerve out of the way because they're nervous. And there's so many things that you just can't control and not even to mention mechanical failures on the car. I mean, our cars are checked and, and meticulously maintained before we head out on track, and we still have mechanical failures. Now, if you're coming on the 401 or 407, 404, wherever you're coming from, and you're doing speeds well over 200 kilometers or 150 kilometers, and something breaks on you, you're not trained for car control. We've spent hundreds of hours, countless amount of hours behind the wheel of a car learning car control, how to prevent it, how to feel when it's going to happen, and in the event that it happens, how do we crash the safest we learn how to brace a crash and the general public just doesn't have that knowledge and it's terrifying to know that there's people out there that are mm -hmm. stunt driving without this background right even even in uh, in city neighborhoods and things so how do you get the message across to teens then yeah, so our primary uh, gr group of offenders, if you will, on paper is between 18 to 25 males. Now, it's not just subject to them. It doesn't just exclude everybody else. There are other uh, offenders with different genders and age groups, but our Teens Learn to Drive program are individuals from the age of 18 to 28. So it's more of a peer-to-peer -peer campaign. And how we're doing that is obviously through campaigning, uh, social media. I think social media is huge. And getting the message across and hopefully having individuals that are within that age category that can relate like, hey, you know, that really isn't cool. Uh, let's get the message across through all different types of platforms. And also being an example yourself. It causes a ripple effect when you as an individual uh, believe in something and, and speak those words and to actually uh, do those actions of, you know, not doing stunt driving yourself and saying, you know what, uh, let's slow those speeds down. You know what, that's not cool. Get off your phone. It's not cool to be doing donuts in parking lots, you know, and just get the message across as an individual and as a group and try to get it out on as many platforms as possible. Mm -hmm. Might be even saying, I'm not getting in the car with you because I've seen how you drive before, right? <laughs> Absolutely. If you don't feel safe and you know that individual's driving tendencies, for sure, you don't, you're not obligated to get into a car with anybody. Okay. Uh, Demi, we've run out of time, but thank you so much for talking to us. Demi Chalkis is a professional driver. She knows what to do. Don't drive like her on the roads. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for having me. Thank you.